All right, we're back. We are still on page 200. Uh, if you've been watching all these videos consecutively, you've maybe noticed that it's getting darker and darker in this room, even though it's like 9.30 in the morning. I guess we're going to have some kind of storm. Hopefully not as bad as what we had the other day where a bunch of trees got knocked down and that was terrible. And if you watch those videos, uh, I kept talking about hurricane-like conditions. So I'm not looking forward to potentially that happening again. We'll see. Um, all right. This is a question with a twist. So particle one travels from a to B in 10 minutes, no problem. Let's just, let's just do that. Let's write those equations so that we can like move on from there. So P1, we've got an X1 and a Y1. So P1 starts at eight, three, gonna lose seven in 10, and gonna lose two in 10, but only takes 10 minutes. Okay, now part, here comes the twist. Particle two travels from C to D, that's normal, that's not a problem. Starts at the same time as particle one, good. Find the time it takes particle two to travel from C to D if it reaches the intersection of the paths, not at the same time as particle one. It reaches the intersection of the paths two minutes after particle one. So particle one, if particle one gets there at t equals one, particle two gets there at t equals three. If particle one gets there at t equals seven, Particle two gets there at t equals nine. It always gets there two minutes later. So I can think of two ways to solve this, maybe. No, I mean, I can. I don't know which one's best. I can actually think of more than two ways to solve this, um, but I don't think I want to deal with all of them. So let's say, okay, so let's, let's start thinking it through, right? So uh, I'm over here, I'm just gonna write a couple things. So if P1 is at the intersection at T equals three, P2 is at the intersection. So this, I think this is useful at T equals five. I think this is useful because it like lets you kind of work it out, right? If you were at, at T equals seven, then it would be at T equals, you'd have to add two, T equals nine. So if we say that um, particle one is at the intersection at just uh, T1, right, at T equals T1, then particle two is gonna be at the intersection at T equals, just add two, T1 plus two, right? This is the big idea that I'm gonna actually use uh, to help me solve this, I think. So we'll be there at T1 plus two. So this is a big deal, maybe. I think that we can write parametric equations for P2 the same way that we have been, right? So P2, let's say takes T2 total from C to D. Well, let's write parametric equations for that. So X2, Y2. So the other way I can think to do this is to um, do the, uh, like create a particle three that just takes one minute to, to do the whole thing. And then do like the time to intersection over time total equals time to intersection over time total. Cause you'll be able to find those. I will perhaps try to do that on the calculator again. Uh, but my description of it was so lacking last time that I basically uh, abandoned ship on the video. One, five, all right, so uh, you're gonna start at one, you're gonna pick up six in T2 times T, and then you're gonna start at five and lose four. So minus four over T2 times T. So this will be valid between zero and T2. All right, let's think about all the things that we know. We know that we actually, so we don't really know, but we kind of know when both particles are at the intersection. Both particles are gonna be at the intersection at T1 for the first particle and T1 plus two. So that's not actually two unknowns, that's one unknown. So I actually know that X1 of T1 should be equal to X2 of T1 plus two. And I know, so this is my system that I'm kind of working out here. My system that I'm gonna solve is gonna be X1 of T1. That's when the first particle gets to the intersection. 
I know that's equal to x2 of two more than whatever t1 is, t1 plus two. So that's one unknown. There's actually two unknowns here. The two unknowns so far are t1 and because x2 is involved, t2, because we don't know what t2 is yet. So we have two unknowns. And then y1 of t1 is going to be equal to y2 of t1 plus 2. And if I solve this, I should get t1 equals something and t2 equals something. And then I just need to remember what each of those represents. And then, uh, I don't know. So it, it, it depends on how this goes. Let's see. I'm going to insert a new problem, graph page, change it to parametric so I can just type these in. All right, 1 plus, nope, that's 2. 8 minus 7 over 10t and 3 minus 2 over 10t. So this one, I, there's definitely like a twist in this problem. Like this is a little bit different from problems that we've done before. Um, and it's because of the like not getting to the intersection at the same time. But you can logic it out and, and solve basically anything at this point, I think. Uh, I'm going to use the fraction template, t2 times t. And then uh, 5 minus 4 over t2 times t. We don't know what t2 is. It'll say, do you want a slider? I don't want a slider. So like nothing happens. Let's insert a calculator page. And we got to solve a system. Menu 3, 7. System of equations. All right, two unknowns, t1 and t2. We know that x1 of t1 should be equal to x2 of t2. Nope, of t1 plus 2. That's, you got to pay attention, me. I'm yelling at me, not you. Um, y1 of t1 equals y2 of t1 plus 2. I mean, all I had to do was read it off the paper, and I failed at that. I'm press enter. OK, so I get t1 is 4. I'm writing these down. t1 is 4. And T2 is 60 over 7. OK, let's go back to the notes and look at what this means. So if I were going to try to do this the other way, what I would do at this point is be like, well, since uh, particle 1 gets the intersection at 4, I know particle 2 gets there at 6. And then I would do my like fake equation. And I would say, like, the fake equation gets there at some time and be like, that time over 1 equals 6 over total and solve for total, and it would be done. Um, here, we're done anyway, uh, because let's think what each thing is, right? So t1, t1 is time for p1 at the intersection. And then t2 is total time. P2. So what was the question? The question was, find the time it takes particle 2 to travel. OK, so particle 2 takes 60 over 7 minutes to travel from C to D. So now what we want to do is, I'm going to check this on GeoGebra. So I'm going to like try to make everything happen. We'll see. So I have to, I have to type in this for sure. And then I have to type in this, but I'm going to replace t2 with 60 over 7. Let's do it. Let's see. Let's see how this goes. I am hoping this goes well. I don't need this anymore. It's an old problem. Uh, classic. Ooh, double clicked. It's all right. Well, maybe. I mean, it's slowing it down considerably that I double clicked. All right, click here. All right, curve. So we're going to do particle 1 first, minus 7 over 10 t, 3 minus 2 over 10 t, t goes from 0 to 10. Oops, wrong way. OK, so uh, we can do a of 0 and a of 10 to see if we like did it. Uh, and that is right. It's been so long since I looked at those, I was like, I did not get that right. But we did get that right. And then we want to put a point on here. Uh, this only goes up to 10, and the other one goes less. Okay, so this this one, this one I don't need to really like modify. Can though, but uh, 10 10 is the maximum that we need. And so we have our point, and it moves. Good deal. Now let's put in the other curve. Curve 
one plus six over, so 60 over seven is the total. And then T, I, I apologize that you can't really, oh, you can, all right. I apologize that I hadn't scrolled up. And then uh, five minus four over 60 over, so I don't need those parentheses. I'm just putting them in because I'm like really unsure where things will end up if I don't do that. So I always try to like, you know, do the right thing. 60 over seven. Okay, so now what we want to try to do is B of zero, and it gives us one five, which is the right starting point, and B of uh, 60 over seven. And it should give us seven one, and it does. Okay, let's put a point on this. So that's B of V, but I want to do B of the minimum of V and 60 over seven, because it should just stop when you get to 60 over seven. So now, moment of truth. So it should be that the first point should get to the intersection at t equals four, which it does. Now point f should get to the intersection at t equals six because it should be two seconds later. And it does, so we got it, all right. And then you can see that it stops when it should, ah, it's so satisfying. Okay, I think we solved this. Um, there are other ways we could do it. I don't think it's, uh, you know, it's just practice and uh, also, this page has probably taken me over an hour at this point. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that that was a good answer. We answered the question. We did it in a way that made sense to me. Hopefully it made sense to you. Uh, I'm gonna stop the video now. I will come back in the next one and uh, we're gonna be on the last page. I don't anticipate it being one video, but we'll see. So anyway, I will uh, see you there.